and head over to Plateau State. Now, the number of internally displaced persons following the June 23rd and 24 attacks on 15 communities in Plateau State villages has risen to 11,515. Now, according to reports, an advocacy group called Stefano's Foundation gave its figure in fact-finding reports and Barkin Ladi attacks on, in 2018 said that the 11,515 IDPs were taking refuge in 13 locations in the state. According to the foundation, a total of 233 people were killed in the two-day <laughs> attacks carried out by suspected uh, herdsmen, while, quote-unquote, those that are badly injured are hospitalized in various medical centers in Joss, with their families left to struggle with the hospital bills. Chukudi, we're looking at some very heinous statistics here. Where do we go from here? I think if you look at this play two situation and other crisis situations in Nigeria, it is an indication that there is no alternative to peace. Now, these 11,500 plus people that have had their life, you know, turned upside down as a result of an incident that spanned just two days, and it's not even up to a month, tell us that we must do all that we can to ensure that we have a society where there is peace and there is stability. Now, you have people who are perhaps, you know, land owners or property owners, or people who would wake up on a normal day and go to their various... Um, you know, place of work or businesses. But today, they are forced to live like animals. Now, this can happen to anybody. You cannot sit in the comfort of your home in Lagos and say, ah, it is not my portion, no. We must begin to demand more from government. Just look at how people are living. Yeah. And it is difficult already living like an average Nigerian without access to basic amenities. It's honestly very heartbreaking because we do have organizations out there like Enough is Enough Nigeria. They came on the show yesterday and when Olive asked Yemi Adamoleku exactly what she wants to achieve from the walk, she said, first of all, we need to be able to name the people who lost their lives. We need to sensitize with the people. This never happens in Nigeria. We don't see this happening on a regular basis. An attack happens and it's just bodies. It's just like logs. And it's numbers. not people. Numbers, and they exactly. go up yeah. and they come down. You see, the truth is, we have always said that sometimes you question if any responsible government in Nigeria <clears throat> has ever placed premium on the average Nigerian life. And why I say average is because at the end of the day, you know, those who, leave, who lose their loved ones are left to grieve alone. There should be a national sense of mourning. And it shouldn't just stop at mourning. We should have a resolve where we say, never again will this happen. It is so sad that you open, you know, the pages of our newspapers and you read about deaths. And these are avoidable incidents. But it would appear like so long as it is not us, or so long as we are protected, I mean, how, why, why should they care? When they have DSS, SSS, MSS, police, MPF, NFF, all of them providing security for them. Now, the people must know that those who represent our interest in government only do so because we validated their mandate on election day. And without the people or without these constituencies that they claim to represent, they would not be in the position in the first place. And Chukudi, I think more so it's also important for those in government to also know that even though you make up 1% <clears throat> of the elite in Nigeria, you too are not safe if 99% of your country is not safe. And I think often enough that message is not passed across. Very you're true. in the 1%, but don't think you're there comfortably if 99% of your country is not. Now, talking about not safe, I'm very sure that we will tie it to the next story. Hey. But look at the French Revolution. You see, it will get to the point where... The people have had their backs pushed to the wall and they are so frustrated that they would have no other option but to react. And at the end of the day, you look at those who think that they are in their, you know, high positions and they are safe from whatever attack, they would most definitely one day have their day in court, not just in the court of law, sometimes also in the court of public opinion. Look at a governor like Joshua Darie that was governor for eight years. Today, he's cooling his heels in detention, sentenced to how many years in prison for a crime that he committed in the early 2000s. So people in positions of authority must understand that when we say, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, we can give it a Nigerian name. And the day it will come visiting. Come the Allied Matters Act. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.